All right, well, hey, good evening, folks. Daniel Karzuski here, live from Washington, D.C., with Salvation Baptist Discipleship Ministries, here with another episode. And tonight, we're going to be talking about baptism, why it's important, what does it mean, where does it come from, what is this tradition, why is it in Scripture, what are we supposed to be doing with it. We're going to cover everything baptism. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to give a quick update. Uh, sorry we haven't done a video in, in a little bit. Um, we were all up and down the East Coast this summer traveling, preaching in different towns and cities and different things, visiting folks and just having a good time this summer. And now we're expecting our third son any day now. So times will be definitely uh, undoubtedly more busy than, than it normally has been. But uh, we're excited. We're happy. We're, we're thankful for the Lord that has given us another child, another boy. His name's going to be David Nathan. Uh, the king and the prophet all in one. And so we're so excited to welcome him into the world, uh, praying for his salvation already, and just looking forward to seeing what the Lord's going to do in the next several months. And as we get some more time, we'll put out some more content, more videos, uh, try to answer your questions. And tonight we're going to dive into baptism. And so I'm going to read several verses. There's 76 specific verses in the New Testament that mention baptism. It is not, the word baptism is not mentioned in the Old Testament. However, the origin of baptism comes from the very first baptism was the flood of the, of the earth, which would cleanse the earth. The second baptism was the baptism of the Jews going through the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea with Moses and different things like that. Right then in that era where Pharaoh was chasing them and uh, the Jews had, they, they had already been saved from the blood of the lamb on the doorpost on Passover. God saved them physically. And then they had to go through the water, which was like their baptism. So there was there's the first two baptisms. And then later in Leviticus chapter 23, God commands the Israelites to cleanse themselves through the washing of water before they take any of the, the feasts and so or the holy days. And so that's where the concepts of baptism originate from. And in the Old Testament, it's specifically annotated and, and spoken like the mikvah, M-I-K-V-A-H. And that's in the Old Testament. You'll find mikvah if you go back and you look in the original Hebrew. And so the Jews, even still to this day, do that. They cleanse themselves in water. They dress themselves in all white. And they dunk themselves. It's a self-baptism. It's not a baptism done by one person or another. And then you find, later on in the Gospels, you find the baptism of repentance. Then you find the baptism of water. Then you find the baptism of the Holy Ghost of fire. And so we're going to talk about... Uh, these things here, starting in Matthew chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. So there's a connection here with baptism, where before you get baptized, you should confess your sins. There's a reason why there's a huge difference between Baptist, Baptists and Catholics. Catholics used to kill any Christian or believer in the Messiah if they would not baptize their babies. Because the Catholics thought that even a baby, if he was baptized, he was going to go to heaven. Well, we know that if babies are die before the age of accountability, they go to heaven based upon the testimony of David. Furthermore, it says here that they need to confess their sins. A baby can't confess their sin. They don't even know they're sinners. Uh, they can't even speak. Different things like that. So we know that the only people in Scripture that were being baptized is adults. And so that's where, that's where we differ between Baptists, Catholics, and mainstream Christians that, that also are, are not Baptists but are de not different denominations that also believe in baptism, they baptize only adults that have confessed their sins unto repentance, unto salvation. And then in Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so most importantly is that we get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That comes through repentance. There are many times in the scriptures where you will see in the New Testament where somebody believed in Jesus, didn't get the Holy Ghost. Somebody who's baptized, didn't get the Holy Ghost. Right, and so even here, where John is baptizing, he's baptizing them into unto repentance. They didn't get the Holy Ghost until the day of Pentecost, right? So they, they had already believed, they had been baptized, and then they got the Holy Ghost, which it comes with fire and it comes with power, and that is that power to seek and save that which is lost and to go out and save souls. 
Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Why should we be baptized? Because John the Baptist was baptizing. He commanded people everywhere to repent of their sins, trust in Christ. And because Jesus himself got baptized. What, what a glorious day. That's, that's so awesome. right? And so right after he got baptized, it says that he went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. So if God was well pleased with his son being baptized, how much more should we want to please our Savior who has just saved us from our sins, from eternal damnation, hell, separation from God unto eternal life? How much more should we want to obey him? And that's the whole point of everything after salvation is obedience, obedience, obedience. That's the second commandment. After you, the commandment to get saved, the commandment is to get baptized, and then the commandment to get discipled. So, and, and, and in every scripture, you'll see in all 76, whenever somebody gets saved, they get baptized the same day. There's not one place in scripture that ever indicate, in, indicates otherwise. There just isn't. And, and if your pastor is out there saying that we need to wait eight months, eight years, whatever the case, I've heard all kinds of different things, um, the, 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 the longer they uh, wait to get baptized, the, the more they stick around or whatever. No, 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 no. This, people are putting blockades between other people's walks with God. That is a dangerous place to be in where you start taking scripture and saying, oh, well, I don't know about this person. Look, did they repent of their sins? Did they trust in Christ? Are they believing with faith? And do they have, do, do they want to get baptized? If they don't want to get baptized, that's a, that's a different story. But if you have somebody that is is rejoicing about the Lord and they want to get baptized, don't wait. If you have to do it in the hotel and you have to go run to a pool, you go run to a lake right there, you, they, they just get them baptized as soon as humanly possible. Yes, you should do it in a church in front of people and in front of witnesses. Hey, as long as you've got two or three or more, what does it say? Uh, where, where two or three or more are gathered, he is in their midst. And so all you need is two. You and another person, you're the witness, and that individual getting baptized, you, you take a look at the Phil, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, and we'll get there in a second. And so uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but Matthew chapter 20, verse 22 also says, But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And again, when we baptize people, we tell them, Buried with Christ in death, raised to walk in newness of life so we are buried in his death and that is the baptism that he had to get baptized with he had to be baptized in basically in his own blood he had to be baptized uh in death for three days in the grave in, in the earth and then he had to raise from the dead the third day and and so when we raise out of that water we're raised to walk in newness of life in christ and how good and glorious it is to do that and i just want to put a plug in there for people that have been baptized unscripturally, whether you were sprinkled, whether you were touched with water, or whatever. Baptism is full immersion, full submersion. That's the Old Testament, it's New Testament, it's full submersion. All this sprinkling stuff, this, this is not biblical. It's just coming extra extra biblical traditions and religion of men. It's, it's not out there. It's just made up stuff. And so I don't know why we're afraid of water. We should just, I mean, even 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 John makes that argument in, in Paul in, in the scriptures. So, um, and, and Jesus himself. So, we just need to get ourselves dunked. You only need to do it one time. Um, if if you were if you did it when you were supposedly lost, then I would recommend that you do it again, because you you want to have that clean conscience unto the Lord that you did it as a as as you were with right standing with your God. You, you want to be right with God. So if you have any doubt that it wasn't real or it was fake or it was pushed on you or, or you just want to get confirmation, you you want to do it again. Hey, I, I encourage. Uh, but, but you don't need to be like uh, the Church of Christ where they're baptizing. Like every time they sin, they, they, they do a baptism. Um, well, number one, Christians shouldn't be sinning anyways. I, I get it that we do, but we shouldn't. And so if you do, uh, God says in 1 John 1, 9, you know, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So that's the point is you don't need to continually get baptized every day. That, that's, that, that is a dangerous practice. And so, moving forward, Matthew chapter 21, 25 says, The baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or of men? And they reason against themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not believe him? And here, John, 
I was talking uh, with the Pharisees and Jesus. They, they were arguing over uh, being baptized in water and, and different things like that. Um, and, and the difference between Jesus' role in all this. And, and then later on in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus literally tells uh, his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And when we baptize people, we baptize them. I baptize you, my brother or my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried with him in death, raised to walk in newness of life. It's a very simple statement. You can say it, you know, one, two, three, like that. It's it's literally so easy. You can teach yourself to say it. Uh, I also had this question many years ago come up: Who can baptize? Any Christian can baptize according to Scripture. It does. It's not. It's not reserved for a pastor. It's not reserved for a deacon. It's not reserved for a uh, missionary, an evangelist, uh, whoever. It's reserved for every born again Christian, because Matthew chapter twenty eight, verse. 18, 19, 20 is to every single born again believer in the Messiah as a Christian. And we are to execute God's commandment, God's commission, and God's orders. And we're not supposed to try to put blockades or stumbling blocks in the way of other people's paths and walks with God. And if we do, then, then we're a problem. There's something wrong with us. And we need to get right with God. If we're like, oh, no, they're not ready yet, or oh, this, that, and the third, or whatever, uh, they didn't answer the question right or you know they they didn't uh, you, you come up with any number of things <laughs> we've got to stop pretending to be God and we just have to obey God and do what his word says uh, then in Mark chapter 1 it says John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins and so that's a good thing and there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And so this is like the same story in, in the different Gospels. Here we have in Mark ten thirty eight. it says, But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Ye can't, can't, can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Baptized with? Here again, we see the same conversation from Jesus being confirmed by Mark. So Matthew confirms it, Mark confirms it. Uh, I mean, we could just stop the video right here and just say, all right, cool, this is, this is enough scripture, but we're, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep looking at this thing a little bit more. And here in Mark 11.30, it says, the baptism, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That is Mark 16.16. 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And people will oftentimes say, oh, well, what about the thief on the cross? Okay, the, number one, the Holy Ghost hadn't even come on the scene yet. He repented of his sins on the cross as he was breathing his last dying breath. And he literally was sorry for that. God says that the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance and, and, and godly sorrow. So that man didn't even he couldn't even come off the cross if he wanted to there was no way for him to get baptized but yet god said he would be with him in heaven be with him in paradise today and so if, if you get saved on your deathbed and there's no physical possible way for you to get baptized hey got it no problem but if you have every opportunity in your breath and your life to get baptized i highly recommend and strongly encourage that you obey the lord's commandment to get baptized because it's not me that's saying it it's the lord jesus christ said that we are supposed to be baptized if if we have um the, the possibility. I mean, this is Mark 16, 16. Jesus read letters. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And then in the early verses of Luke chapter 3 and, and 7, it talks about the exact same story that we've been reading in uh, Matthew and, and Mark. And then in Luke twelve fifty it says, but I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? And Jesus was confirming that he needed to die that he needed to die for the sins of mankind and the world and then john also confirms this exact same scenario in the beginning of john and again that's probably a good 50 verses between matthew mark luke and john and then the rest of the verses that we see about baptism are in the rest of the new testament in acts corinthians and, and a couple other places and so i'll, I'll read some of them here for you and in Acts 1.5, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And that's Jesus speaking to the disciples. And that was, remember, it was 50 days after the, uh, the, the death of Jesus Christ, was, which was the fulfilling of the prophetic 
day of Passover, uh, unleavened bread, feast of first fruits, and then a feast of uh, Pentecost, and so which would have been fifty days after. And remember, Jesus abode with them uh, on the earth for forty days after he had risen, or after he had risen. So you, you've got that that forty day period where there was five hundred witnesses, and um, n nobody was getting baptized generally at at that point. It was it wasn't until the three thousand Jews uh, or people got saved at the day of Pentecost that they had to you know in one day they had three thousand people in their church and they had to baptize all of them in the river. I mean I, I can't imagine how awesome and glorious that that, that day must have been. It, it must have been just the most amazing thing ever. I mean imagine Peter you know denying the Lord uh, several weeks before thinking about you know what 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 is God going to do with my life and then boom you know he's he's speaking in tongues and uh, you know everybody can hear him and understand him. And then he's baptizing 3,000 people in the river. And he's like, hey, we need all the disciples. We need all the apostles. We need everybody. Help out. And that would be just such an amazing time. And so here it talks about uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 22. says, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And then in Acts 2.38 says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this is very important right here. You have to obey the Lord's commandment to repent and be baptized. And then you will get remission of your sins through Jesus Christ, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Holy Ghost gives us knowledge. He gives us all truth. He gives us conviction. He gives us discernment. He gives us so many th things through the Holy Ghost. He also gives us all of our spiritual gifts and the ability to create the fruit that remains and, and the spiritual fruit, right? The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, and so on. Then it says in Acts 2.41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. You've got to gladly receive his word. You can't, you can't begrudgingly do it. You can't be forced to be baptized. It's not going to work. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This is a story that I was just telling you about. And then in Acts 8, 12, it says, But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Immediately, right? This, everything is the same day, same day, same day, same day, same day. There's not all this waiting business. All these people saying, oh, we need to wait, we need to check. You know, we don't need to check anything. We did, do they believe? Have they repented? Hey, baptize these people. Don't wait. You're, 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 don't do not become a hindrance or a stumbling block to other believers carry around an inflatable pool if you have to like i, I don't know uh but at this point i've just seen so i've been in so many churches over my time in, in life where either they don't go soul winning or they, they they call themselves baptists they don't even baptize people so i'm, I'm just so confused at what what is happening uh in our society and our culture today and, and i would think if somebody wants to get baptized baptize them they're going to get more on fire they're going to be excited about their faith they're going to want to talk about the lord they're going to be they're going to be happy about what they're going to be joyful about what they've done they've obeyed the lord's commandment to be baptized <clears throat> and then in Acts 8 16 it says for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and then here in Acts 8 13 it says then Simon himself believed also whom and when he was baptized he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done um, and in, in this in this story with Simon this is uh, Simon the uh, the sorcerer he had gotten saved he got baptized and uh, he committed a sin he wanted to buy the power of the holy ghost later on and so he had seen other people believe and get baptized and and, and have the holy ghost but he didn't re he might have not repented right and so that's the big difference um it, it sounded like initially he might have if he believed and he was baptized but the thing is that peter came behind him and said hey look uh you, you can't do this you, you need to be you, you need to repent so you know, there, there's some questions there on whether or not he was really saved, on whether or not he needed to get baptized again. There's different things like that. Um, and, and as ministers, we have to take each and every case uh, individually. We have to look at the people, the person, the soul, the sins, the righteousness, look at where their heart's at, look at where their soul and their spirit's at, and, and really discern what is going on here and whether or not they're a true believer whether or not they, they need to get saved, they need to repent of their sin, do they need to get baptized again, whatever it is, uh, you, you have to be able to look at scripture and look at that person's life and assess that and then you know carry on with the mission of the gospel. And then Acts 8.36 says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and that skipped a verse there but um 
later on it says and immediately there fell on his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forthwith forthwith and arose and he was baptized this is talking about paul three days later the scales fell off he got baptized we all know the story paul was on the road to damascus to persecute more christians and then jesus christ stopped him dead in his tracks um put a put put blindness on his eyes with scales for three days went and saw um the man in the city and then the man preached to him and then he ended up as soon as he he got his sight back after three days he got baptized and so that's baptized basically the same day right he, he came to he he understood what what happened he was he's like all right cool I'm, I'm i'm down with the christians now i'm done persecuting them so so let's do this uh, and then paul got on fire for the lord and it, it took a while for people to trust him but uh he was eventually received and, and wrote so many letters in the new testament that we have blessedly today and then in acts 10 37 and 47 it says that word i say ye know which was published throughout all judea began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord then prayed to him then then prayed they him to tarry certain days and so we see there are certain times in, in scriptures where people have believed they weren't really sure what they should do should should they be baptized should they not be baptized and Paul's like yes absolutely you, you believe Hey, just get baptized, you know, and and so Paul stayed there and and started to train those folks, uh, because obviously there's difficult, you know, questions in, in in life in scripture. I mean, there's thousands of pages of scripture, so sometimes it's it's so easy to um, to get wrapped up, and then especially when you've got all these other competing religions and philosophies out there to deal with. Uh, do I get baptized? Do I not? Is it important? It, does, does baptism save me? All these different types of things. No, baptism doesn't save you. It's like the ring. Baptism is an obedience. If, if I take this ring off, it doesn't mean that I'm not saved anymore or th that I'm not married anymore. It just means that I'm simply, uh, um, I simply took it off. But if you were to see me out in town, you wouldn't know if I was married or not. And so I wear this as a symbol to say, hey, yes, I, I, I've been married to my wife and I love her. And so it's the same way with baptism. It, when, you, when you get baptized, it's a, it's a showing that, yes, I've trusted in Christ. I've repented of my sins. I want to walk with the Lord and I want to show the world who I am. And that's the way of identifying. And there's really no other religion out there that has that type of symbolism other than like, you've got Hindu weird stuff. They, they do all the cutting and, and different things like that. So there's a lot of um, complications with, with other religions there. And it's a lot of self-deprecating things. Whereas in baptism, you're just getting in the water. There's nothing hard with that. Um, there's some people, I've baptized guys in frozen lakes. I mean, they're they're excited to do it. You know, we're, we're excited. We're fired up. I mean, it's the holy ghost just does something during that time when you baptize somebody in a free freezing frozen uh tundra lake you don't even feel the the cold it just it's supernatural i don't know how to explain it it's, it's awesome so and then furthermore acts eleven sixteen says then remembered i the word of the lord how that he said john indeed baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost and then when john had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of israel and so I'm going to skip down here a little bit, and we're going to look at some things in, in Romans here. Romans 6, 3 says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? There we go again. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And so that's where that statement comes from. Buried with him in death, walk, raised to walk in newness of life. 1 Corinthians 1.13 says, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized I also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any others. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And so here we have a story of people that were arguing about, uh, you know, the, and there, there's, you even have this problem even today where you've got like Pauline Christians that like love Paul more over than, than, than Jesus and, and different things like that. So that, that is a problem when you, whenever you put a man uh, who is not God or not Jesus above God himself, that's going to cause a conflict and a problem. And you have to understand that Paul was totally submitted to, to Christ and he wasn't out there just trying to baptize people. He was trying to get folks saved. And so you you, you as the preacher don't have to baptize everybody. Um, and you can have other Christians. I've had to train other Christians how to baptize people. Like, like 
on fire people who have been Christians for 5, 10, 15 years and they're like, no, I never baptized anybody. Like, I thought I wasn't allowed to do that. What do you mean you weren't? What do you mean you didn't think you were allowed to do that? It's so simple. You literally just go and read scripture, Matthew chapter 28, and boom. You, you, can, can you lead somebody to the Lord in a prayer? Of course. Who, who does the saving? The Lord. Okay, so you didn't even save him anyways. And then who does the baptizing? Well, yeah, technically you just put the dude in the water, but he is being baptized unto obedience. And, and I really got to skip down to, um, to Peter real quick. Because Peter tells us that in 1 Peter 3, 21, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's why we get baptized. It doesn't save us. It puts away the filthy flesh and tells the world that we're submitted to Christ. And it gives us a good conscience because we've obeyed our Savior. We've obeyed the Lord. And so there's just a couple other verses here that I can't believe we've gone through 76 that quick. But First uh, Corinthians uh, 12 or 10 verse 2 says, And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That's what I was talking about in the beginning, the baptism of the Red Sea. And then for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We're all supposed to be baptized, every single one of us, into the body of Christ. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So think about it. There's an inclination there that if you've not been baptized... And you're not obeying the Lord's command to be baptized. Now you're living in willful disobedience and you know you need to be baptized. There's this weird philosophy out there that people think they have to spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks trying to figure out what does baptism mean. It shouldn't take that long. I mean, it. I can give, I can give you the gospel presentation in 30 seconds to a minute. The death, burial, and resurrection. It's so easy. I'm not trying to make light of scripture, but it's salvation. There's a simplicity of Christ in salvation. There's also a simplicity of Christ in baptism. And it's not that difficult to understand. We've, we've explained everything here in, in 10 or 20 minutes. And so if you need to show somebody this, this video, please, by all means, share this, like this, um, send, send it wherever you need to, because this could help somebody. This could be the difference between somebody obeying the Lord in baptism and somebody not obeying. And, and, and again, this, this video is being made to demystify a lot of error around the world that's, that's being preached. Um, people think they're preaching the truth, but they're just preaching their opinion. And that's, that's, that's a dangerous place to be in because we don't want to send people down the wrong road. Um, like, like I've met some people that haven't been baptized for 10 years. They've been saved and haven't been baptized 10 years. Why? What's the reason? Has nobody questioned them? I mean, that should be like the one of the first things. Hey, when do you get saved? Hey, when do you get baptized? Hey, have you been discipled? That's like the first three things that you ask somebody. Hey, now what are you doing? What, what are you serving? In? How are you serving? What church are you going to? You know, uh, just different things like that. Trying to just iron sharpening iron and keeping keeping accountability of one another. That's what we're supposed to do to, to build one another up. That's the whole point of this video. And then... In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, it says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Again, one baptism. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And then Hebrews chapter 6, verse 2 says, Of the doctrine of baptisms, and the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And I want to go back up quick to Mark chapter 16, verse 16. And... I love this verse right here, and I really love this whole set of verse because this is all Jesus speaking right here. And so Jesus says in verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Um, I, I love that because sometimes I'll be talking to animals and just you'd be talking about the Lord. You know, it's just it's fun stuff. And then it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. This is Jesus. There's no arguing with that. He, he must believe and be baptized. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Right? If we say we believe and obey not, do did we really even believe in faith or were we just like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, you know, just not even thinking about what we're doing. And then in verse 17, this is great. After you get, after you get saved and after you get baptized, there's, I've seen this. 
in my time in ministry and in, and in Christian circles and in churches, anyone who does not obey the Lord in baptism, in believer's baptism and the Lord's baptism, I believe holds a curse over their head for as long as they live. Because now they're in willful disobedience to the Lord's command. The very first command after you're saved, you're going to say, oh, I go to church, all I tithe, all I serve, I do all this stuff. But you haven't even been baptized. And so where's your where's your power? You say you're saved, well, then prove it and be baptized. Show the world who you are. What are you afraid of? We shouldn't be afraid. But I'll tell you, when I was in Japan, to be baptized, it's one thing to believe in secret. It's a total other thing to deny your old religion like Hinduism and Buddhism and then believe in Christ and show the world by being baptized. And there's a lot of people that get cut off from their families, they get cut off from the world for whatever reason, cultural differences, traditional differences, religious differences. And Jesus Christ, he said that, you know, there's only peace found in me, but I have not come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And, and that sword is the lost versus the saved. And the lost need to get saved. And that's the only way that you're going to get blessed. It's the only way you're going to get eternal life is by getting saved, getting baptized, walking with the Lord. And, and there's no greater life. And look at, look at what you get here after you obey the Lord. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, and, and then uh, you got to read the next verse. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Man, I love that. Uh, I hope that was a blessing to your soul. That's just a quick down and dirty on every verse on baptism in the New Testament and what it meant in the Old. I hope you guys were blessed with that. If there's anybody that has questions about baptism, please give us a call, write us, uh, leave a comment, whatever. Uh, send this to somebody that, that needs baptism, that needs help. Um, I, I've even mentored one person. They said, I, I don't I don't even know any Christians anywhere. I believe in Christ. What, what, how can I get baptized? I don't even have a church anywhere. Okay, well, here's what you do. Go baptize yourself first, like the Jews. And then when you get to a church, under a pastor or a minister or whoever, deacon, whoever can do it, whoever, whatever Christian can do it, then you tell them that you wanted to obey the Lord's commandment at first opportunity and baptize yourself. And then you want to be baptized in public. That's the best way to do it. I think, I think in order to get the blessing of God on your life, instant obedience to orders, just like we say in the Marine Corps, is, is a must. And I and I promise you, you will be blessed because of your obedience. So anyways, I want to sign off for here tonight. I love you all. Thank you guys for tuning into the ministry. And I hope this was a help. And uh, let me close in a quick word of prayer. Father, I pray for anybody out there, Lord, that's watching this, that is questioning baptism, or they had never heard of it, or they had questions on the different verses and things like that, the history of it, Lord. I just pray that you would uh, convict them and... Help them to understand their need to be baptized and what it means. And Father, I pray that this was simple and that it would be easy to understand, Lord. And you're, you are not a God of confusion. You are the author of absolute truth. And we thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that you've baptized me both in water and in the Spirit. And you've baptized me in the Holy Ghost of fire, Father. I pray that you would baptize every person watching this in your Holy Ghost of fire, Lord, and in water unto the obedience of your commandment, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, good night. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.